bless you guys. What a wonderful day today that the Lord has given us. And today, He has given us to read together Bible encouragement. Um, John chapter 8 verses 17 to 30 today, He has given us to read today. If you guys have not heard of the good news, um, watch yesterday's video, but I will say that, well, I'm, the good news was that we could start inviting people to the channel and, you know, to do separate videos like youth and, you know, stuff like that. Like, you know, have people do videos, record it, send it to me, and I will upload it on video. Instead of it just only being me, it will be other youth as well, and I'm still waiting for the other youth of the church I go to to pray about it including my brother but you guys if you guys are interested just pray about it to the Lord so the Lord could tell you if he wants you to do it or not but that's the news if you guys want to know more about it watch yesterday's video but let's pray for the word John 8 verse 17 to 30 dear father God we come to your presence Lord to thank you for this beautiful day, Lord, because you didn't have to give us another day, but you're so merciful for us that you want us to change our ways and become new bodies and become new creations, Lord, and keep on moving forward following the Son, the Son of God, your Son, Jesus, the way he walked on this earth as a human being, and you was inside of him, Lord, to guide him because he is your Son, and we need to walk how like your Son walked so we could enter the kingdom of heaven Forgive us for our sins, Lord, because we make mistakes, but it's no excuse to act. It's no excuse. It's no excuse, Lord. That's what we need to pray to you and ask for repentance. Ask for forgiveness and repent, Lord, because you're coming soon and we don't want to stay, Lord, because we need you, Lord. We need you in these difficult times because the end is near. We don't know when you're coming, but we're closer to the, we're closer to the end. We don't know if it could be a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years. We don't know, Lord. We don't know when the day you're coming, but we want to be prepared. So we ask of you to guide us in the Holy Spirit at all times. Protect us in the Holy Spirit at all times. Anything that the enemy tries to put, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus, your son, Lord. We thank you for everything that you've done in our lives. Protect our families, our friends, anybody we know, even our co-workers. Protect the world. Forgive the world. Forgive me. Anybody watching this video, forgive them. Help them. Help me. Help the world. Help us be in one spirit. So we could save how many lives in your glory. Because that's you using us, Lord, to save lives. Because sin is the ultimate. Sin is so bad that it leads to death. But doing right by you, God leads to salvation and eternity in heaven and that's all we need from you lord so we thank you for this day we ask for forgiveness once again and guide us and protect us in the holy spirit give me wisdom of the word that's going to be read in john 8 verse 17 to 30 guide us in the holy spirit in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen amen so the word is read in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit Amen. If you guys have a Bible, read along. If you guys don't, listen. But this is it. Verse 17. Well, verse 12. My bad. That looked like a 7 to me. Verse 12. John 8, verse 12. My mistakes. That looked like a 17. I need glasses. I should be having a eye doctor appointment, so I need glasses. I thought that was 17. So John 8, verse 12. John 8, verse 12 to 30. The word is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. The Pharisees replied, you are making those claims about yourself. Such testimony is not valid. Jesus told them, these claims are valid, even though I make them about myself, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you don't know this about me. You judge me by human standards, but I do not judge anyone. And if I did, my judgment would be correct in every respect, because I am not alone. The Father who sent me is with me. 
your own law says that if two people agree about something, their witness is accepted as fact. I am one witness, and my father who sent me is the other. Where is your father? they asked. Jesus answered, since you don't know who I am, don't, since you don't know who I am, you don't know who my father is. If you knew me, you would also know my father. Jesus made these statements while he was teaching in the section of the temple known as the treasury. But he was not arrested because his, because his time had not yet come. The unbelieving people warn. That's another title. Later, Jesus said to them, again, I am going away. You will search for me, but will die in your sin. You cannot come where I am going. The people asked, is he planning to com commit suicide? What does he mean? You cannot come where I am going. Jesus continued, you are from below. I am from above. You belong to this world. I do not. I do. I do not. That is why I said that you will die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am who I claim to be, you will die in your sins. Who are you? They demanded. Jesus replied, the one I have always claimed to be. I have much. I have much to say about you and much to condemn. But I won't. For I say only. What I have heard from the one who sent me, and he is completely truthful. But they still didn't understand that he was talking about his father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will understand that I am he. I do nothing on my own but say only what the Father taught me. And the one who sent me is with me. He is not this he is not deserted deserted me, for I always do what pleases him. Then many who've heard him says these things believed in him. Amen. That was a beautiful word. Everything in the Bible is beautiful. Everything you read, but this whew, it touched me. This is basically the same. The first part is basically saying um, that Jesus is the light of the world. If you don't follow Jesus, you're living in darkness. Because the way it says here, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, if we, we follow Jesus, you won't have to walk in the darkness because you will have light that leads to life. If we walk with Jesus, we have light. We have light, guys. We have light. That will, you know, lead to life, eternal life. If you follow the Lord, we trust in the Lord, we obey the Lord, we do the Lord's works. The Lord will protect us and guide us in the Holy Spirit until the day He comes, because nobody knows when the Father's when when the Father's gonna come. The Father sent His Son, Jesus Christ, in the flesh. That's the Father. That's God in the flesh, and that's His Son. We, like it says in John chapter fourteen, verse six. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to the Father except through me. Nobody can come to the Father except through him. Nobody has seen the Father. The only way you can see the Father is if you see Jesus. And they they doubted Jesus. And in John 8, from 17 to 30, and even in John 14, or the whole entire John 14, people doubted Jesus. People said, if you're God, then do this. If you're, God, if you're God, where's your father? People ask, where's your father? Don't you see the father? He's in me. The father is in Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus is telling people. He came to this world because the Lord, our father, our Lord and Savior, came to put himself in the world, but as the flesh and his son. His son is Jesus. And the thing is, people didn't believe it. The Pharisees didn't believe it. It says, Jesus told them, these claims are valid. Wait, it says, the Pharisees replied, you are making those claims about yourself. Such testimony is not valid. But Jesus, this is what Jesus told them. Jesus told them, these claims are valid. Even though I make 
them about myself for I know where I come from, where I am going. But you don't know this about me. You judge me by human standards. They judge him because he's human. They don't think he's God. That They judge Jesus because they don't think he's the son of God. They don't think he he's, you know, they don't think he's powerful. And that's what the Pharisees doubted about Jesus. And this is saying where it says, um, and if I did, my judgment would be correct in every respect because I am not alone. The Father who sent me is with me. The Father sent Jesus and is with him. So Jesus said, if I judge, it's because I have the correct respect to judge because I don't want you guys to live in sin. I don't want you guys to sin. I don't want you guys to perish. So that's why when the Lord corrects us, only the Lord could judge us. And when he judges us, he's correcting us because he wants us to change and not perish and not be in sin and not be in the darkness. He wants us to be in the light in the darkness. And this this is so good because this this verse right here, when you go down. um, So this is basically saying that the Lord, that Jesus, he's the light. In order to get to the Father, to see the Father, well, you see the Father through Jesus. But in order to go to heaven, you got to follow Jesus. Just like what Jesus did, since that's the Lord in the flesh, that's the that's the Lord's son. We have to follow what Jesus did on this earth. We got to follow. We have to walk how he walked. And that's what it's basically saying. Chapter John, verse 12 to 30. And where it says here, it says the second part basically means the the unbelieving people warned. Jesus is warning the unbelieving people. And this is how he warns them. Later, Jesus said to them again, I am going away. You will search for me, but will die in your sin. You cannot come where I am going. The people ask, is he planning to commit suicide? What does he mean? You cannot come where I am going. Jesus continued, you are from be below and I am above. You belong to the world. I I do not. This is basically saying the Lord. They asked him. They thought that Jesus was going to commit suicide. But Jesus said, I'm above. You're below. You belong to the world since you don't want to follow me. And basically, if we don't follow, if we don't follow, if we don't follow the Lord, we're basically committing suicide. That's basically because if we don't follow God. We're going to perish in hell. We're going to perish. And when nobody wants to perish. And basically, the Lord gives us free will where we want to go. We just have to choose the Lord, not choose the devil. And basically, when the Pharisees asked, that, is, he is, he, is he planning to commit suicide? But Jesus turned it around and said, no, 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 no. If you don't follow me, you're committing suicide because sin leads to death. And basically, if you sin, you're killing yourself. You're not killing yourself physically. You're killing yourself spiritually, and and you know spiritually. And when and when the Lord comes, you know, you will die. And you could sin. You live in sin. It's gonna lead to death. You could die before the Lord comes. You could die the day when the Lord comes. You could die when He steps foot on the earth on judgment, and He could put you in the lake of fire. Himself, himself to put you there. That's what I'm saying. The wages of sin, it says in the Bible, the wages of sin is death. If you follow Jesus, you be the light in the darkness. And Jesus is the light. And once Jesus is the light, you, he will give you, Jesus will give you the light to lead to eternal life when you follow this, Jesus. Because like it says in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus the only way to the Father. And he on John 8 verse 12 to 30, this is basically saying, if you don't follow me, you're going to die. Because the wages of sin is death. And it says it. And then this is basically saying, Jesus continue. Um, It says you belong to, the, wait, it says that, that is why I said that you will die in your sins. For unless, this is verse 24, I just read verse 23 before. Unless you believe that I am who I claim to be, you will die in your, in, in your sins. If we, if we don't claim, right, that, if we don't claim that, you know, 
that Jesus is Lord, if we don't follow him, we're not going to see heaven. We're not going to see the Father. We see the Father through Jesus. If we don't have Jesus, we don't see nothing. We won't even see eternal life. So this is basically saying, this is a warning. Because it says here, the unbelief people warn. That's what it says for the title. And basically it's explaining, the Lord is saying, if you keep on sinning, you keep on doing what you're doing, that does not come from me, you're going to die. And basically, if you don't follow the Lord, you're basically committing suicide because the Lord gives us free will, whether we want to follow him or not. The Lord is not going to force you. That's what's important. The Lord gives you the choice. When the Lord knocks on that door, it's time to open. You don't reject it because if you reject it, the Lord is going to get angry. But you know the Lord is going to knock on that door again. He's going to knock on that door. But if you keep on rejecting the Lord, the Lord is just going to flee and just... He's not gonna. He's not gonna help you. So that's the point when you hear that knocking sound. When he opens that door, you gotta gotta wake up. And that's what it's basically saying here. He's warning the unbelief people. And then it says on this verse. It says. It says on verse t -t 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 -t, um twenty eight. No. 25 no 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 yeah 25 jesus replied the one i have always claimed to be i have much to say about you and much to condemn but i won't he won't because he's merciful to us he wants us to change our ways for i say only what i have heard from the one who sent me and he is completely truthful jesus is saying his father his father sent him to this earth and the Father is very truthful. Everything in the Bible is very truthful. Nothing in the Bible is a lie. It, everything, everything what it says in the Bible is real. This is real. So if somebody tells you that the Bible is fake, you just pray for them. Don't don't argue with them, because you know some people like to argue. Well, if you you know if you tell them that it's not real. And you're angry, you know, if you have righteous anger, then yeah, but like, you know, don't don't fight the person, like physical fight them. But, but you know, you get what I'm saying, like, you know, just pray for them, that they will change. Don't, don't, don't feed into it. Because in the Bible it says, if somebody, you know, does not believe of what I say, try not to feed into it. Try not to tell them, correct them, and pray for them. Try not to put your mind towards it. Because... The Lord wants us to correct those people and pray for those people and help those people, but also leave it in the Lord's hands. Because once we trust in the Lord to change those people, the Lord will change those people. He will work in them. He will work on them as, as the best. Because that's the thing. We can't always try to change people. We, we can't. We're just here to do God's work and we try to change people. But we... Us human beings, we don't change the people. That's God. God uses the people. He uses us. And God changes the people. When God uses us, He changes the people. We don't change the people. So if 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 somebody says, I'm glad you changed me, that's that's that wasn't from you. That's from God. Because God, He will use you to change people. And God will change people. And that's what God does. But you just got to trust in the Lord. Don't put it in your own hands trying to change somebody. Just trust in the Lord of what He wants you to do and let Him change that person. If He wants you to talk to them and correct them, and you know, you you know, if the Lord says do that, do that. But like, don't don't force it. If the Lord doesn't want you, let the Lord trust in Him. With everything, you trust in Him. Very important. A lot of people forget about that, but and there were times I forget about that too. But it's very important to trust in Him with everything. So this says, if we, if we go on, it says, uh, but on 27, but they were, but they still didn't understand that he was talking about his father. They didn't understand that Jesus was talking about his father, the Pharisees. They didn't understand. But then on 28, it says, so Jesus said, when you have lifted up the son of man on the cross, then you will understand that I am he. I do nothing on my own, but say only what the Father taught me. This is basically, I, Jesus, throughout his life, here on this earth, in the Bible, a, 
a lot of chapters, verses in the Bible. He foretell he foretells the future, and he foretells his death. He knew he was going to die. He knew. He he know he knew what was going to happen to him because he says it right here. When you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will understand that I am He. So he told the Pharisees, when you lift the Son of the Son of Man, when you lift up Jesus, you will know I am He. He warned them. Basically, he warned them. Because this this right here is basically Jesus is warning the unbelieving people. And he also told that Jesus also said that Jesus knew he was going to be on the cross. He just said it right there and then. But, you know, the Pharisees, they still didn't believe Jesus. And they, you know, they still questioned him. They still asked questions. And they still, you know, didn't want to believe him. But then it says... I do nothing on my own, but say what the Father has taught me. Jesus do nothing on his own. Whatever he says, the healings he do, everything that he does is coming from the Father. That's what Jesus is telling the, um, the, the unbelieving people, basically the Pharisees. That's what he's telling. He's telling them that everything that I say does not come from me. It comes from my Father. And that's what Jesus is saying because if you look in the beginning... What the verse that I read in the beginning, it says, uh, "Where is it? Where is it? I just I, I was just looking at it. It says Jesus told him these claims are valid, even though I make them about myself. For I know where I came from, where I am going. But you don't know this about me. You judge me by human standards, but I do not judge anyone. Basically." Human standards, they, the Pharisees judged Jesus because he was human. They didn't believe that he was the son of God. They didn't believe that he was powerful. They didn't believe of what Jesus said he was. So that's why from on the second part, Jesus is warning them. And it says this, to end it up, it says, And the one who sent me is me, is with me. That's, that's his father. His father sent Jesus and the Father is in Jesus. That's what he's saying. Then it says, For I always do what pleases him. Jesus said, I will always do what pleases my Father. Then many who heard him say these things believed in him. Many who heard the heard him says these things believed in him. Believe. Seek the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Don't doubt the Lord. Don't question the Lord. They will... Trust me, there were times I questioned God, but, you know, you know, there are times that, you know, there's sometimes I do question God sometimes, but we should be questioning God. And everybody questions God, at least, you know, sometime in their life. Nobody has not said, I never question God. Everybody always question God for something. But it's important, don't question God, just trust in Him. Let Him work in you, let Him do His works, let Him guide you in the Holy Spirit. And things will go well for you. Just trust in him and guide him. So that's what I basically have for John 8 verse 12 to 30. But let's pray for the ending. So close your eyes and pray with me. Dear Father God, we come to your presence, Lord. To thank you for this beautiful word that you have given us. Everything in the Bible is beautiful, Lord. It's the truth. It's the way to get to our salvation and eternity, Lord. Thank you for guiding us and protecting us in the Holy Spirit. For those who overcame COVID-19, glory to God, we thank you. For those who are suffering in these times, protect them, Lord. Guide them in the Holy Spirit. Show them you, Lord, that you know you have them, even through the, be even through the struggling times. Because, you know, everything is worth it, Lord, until the end. We have to endure with you to the end, so we thank you. For whoever may be watching this video, protect them, protect their families. Protect them and their families. Guide them. Guide me and the Holy Spirit. Protect my family, wherever they may be, and my family, which I'm with right now. Thank you for this day. We hope there's another day tomorrow. Forgive us for our sins, Lord, because we are human. We might make, we we will make mistakes, but it's no excuse to keep on get keep keep our heads up high. Um, pray, ask for forgiveness, and repent, and keep on moving forward, and not looking look into the past, Lord. So we thank you for this day, Lord. We hope there's another day tomorrow. 
and if the enemy anything that's the enemy is doing right now with the confusion with the COVID-19 and and this and that and this and that around the world he's confusing and we we ask of you we trust in you in your son's name in the name of Jesus we rebuke him that he will he will not confuse anybody no more because you're the way you're the you're the way and we need to trust in you and endure in you and believe in you and seek you and let you guide us Lord so we thank you for this day protect our families for whoever this may be watching this video whenever they will protect them as well guide them in the Holy Spirit because you have plans for people that you have plans for and we just want to seek you and be guided to have those plans fulfilled until the day you come because we don't know when you're coming but the day you come we want to be prepared so we ask of you to give us the wisdom each day how to live our lives and be guided by the Spirit always for your glory so we thank you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this Bible encouragement of John 8, verse 12 to 30. Let's hope there's another Bible encouragement tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. But let's hope. Let's hope and pray. But, you know, this is whenever the Lord says so. We... We, you know, got to keep on doing his works. We have to trust in him. We got to keep on enduring him to the end. We have to move forward and not look back. Even if the enemy tries to, like, distract us, we rebuke him and keep on moving forward. Because the Lord is coming soon and we have to be ready. So, I thank you for watching this Bible encouragement. You're not watching this for me. You're watching this for the Lord. Because the Lord wants you to hear this. So, all of the glory is to the Lord. So remember that. So remember, whatever you do for God, you always give Him the glory. Because if it wasn't for God, I would have never been doing this Bible encouragement. So thank the Lord. Don't thank me. Thank Him. And hope, let's hope there's another Bible encouragement tomorrow. And God bless you guys. Hope you guys enjoy your evening, your day, whichever it may be, wherever you, wherever you are watching this video around the world because I'm not sure who's watching this video whether they live in New York, Hawaii, um, um, Spain, I don't know. So wherever you may be, enjoy that day that the Lord has given you and be guided and pray and seek Him, trust in Him, to do what's right for the Lord and things will go good. So God bless you guys and let's hope there's another Bible encouragement.